Welcome to Haxby Shed. Quite some time ago now I made a video about my homemade large drill sharpener. Now large drills for me means something between half an inch and maybe one and a quarter inches. It's had about 19,000 views which is very good for me but somebody left a comment saying Oi, you didn't show us actually sharpening a drill. And I've been waiting for quite a long time to find a drill that's worth sharpening because I'm not going to sharpen ones that don't need sharpening. And I bought a couple of drills recently, two pounds each, a 9 sixteenths and an 11 sixteenths. And certainly the 9 sixteenths needs re-grinding. That's about 14 and a quarter millimetres. So we'll set it up on the jig and I'll talk you through grinding it. I hope you find it useful. This is the base for my jig. But the first thing I need to do is to take this part of the cover off on the grinding wheel. And that allows us to put the tool into here. Now we can drop the jig into place. That's it. Next undo the drill clamp and bring it back back to this stop here. I'll do close-ups of all of this in a minute, I'm just giving you the general idea. Now this particular drill that I want to sharpen has got a step just here, if you can see that. And uh, if I let it sit in this tray, it'll be off angle. So I'm just going to put a little bit of packing at the front here. So the packing will go in like that and I'll get this drill set up now. just keep going until this side is cleaned up. Being a bit careful because obviously I'm using the side of the wheel and I don't want to burn the drill either. When I've finished on one side and I've gone in as far as I need to go I just put this little engineer's clamp on here and set it so that this plate, I know how far this plate has to come forward which means I know how far forward the drill goes. Now I'll back this off, I'll rotate this drill and do the other side but this clamp should ensure that I get both sides the same. Okay, I've screwed this up to this clamp now, so both sides should be cut the same. So let's get it out and have a quick look at it. Now I tell you quite honestly, I've not taken this out to have a look at it, so you're going to see it as I see it. With all of its um, goodness and badness, whatever that is. You know, I don't know if you can see that. Let me um, turn the view around so I can see what you're seeing. Do you know, that's pretty good, I think. That's pretty good. I'll do a proper close-up. There we are. Now, my drill jig only swivels in one plane. To cut a drill perfectly, I'm sure you have to be able to be able to twist and turn at the same time. So that cut is an approximation. But I think you can see that it's nice and bright. Believe me, it does have a back off angle of about seven degrees. And you can see that 45 degree chisel. Now I made that drill sharpener for nothing, just a bit of time, that's all. And around here, if you wanted a proper tool and cutter grinder, even something quite old is going to cost you about £600. So 
you know, I'm prepared to accept a little bit of compromise <laughs> for the sake of spending nothing versus spending £600. Well, let's see if it'll cut then. Just a piece of scrap steel, there's a hole in it already, it's only mild steel. Piece of angle iron I think at some point. And uh, trust me, it is the same drill. Well, I think you'd agree that works. So we'll go back and have a look at the components and features of the drill grinding jig in a bit more detail. Right, well, the features such as they are. Angle iron, angle iron, angle iron, a screw, um, a piece of plate, just any old bit of plate welded onto the bottom of this piece of angle iron. This was part of a stay for a washing machine motor. Um, perhaps to be slightly more serious, the angle of the point is set by this angle here. Okay, so the drill sits at the point angle, or at least should I say half the point angle. And then it sweeps round to give you the relief angle, the backing off angle whatever that's called, maybe seven degrees, something like that. And basically the cut starts at that angle. So I hope you can see that we're not at 90 degrees to the wheel. We're starting at about seven degrees off this way. Um, what's that, 83 degrees if you like. And then we swivel and it cuts the face of the drill point. Now there's a peg here, if you can see it, which is used to locate um, the flute. To keep the flute, the bottom flute, top flutes vertical at the point you're setting it up. Here's an important point I think. This peg and this plate with a hole in it limits the movement of the drill. So you're starting here and you move across to here. Now I've seen various uh, smaller grinding jigs that run right across the face of the wheel, you know, almost a sort of a 100 degree swing, but I just could not get that to work with these. So <clears throat> the swing on my jig is limited to this. And then there's probably one other point to really highlight. Different sized drills need to turn on a different radius as you cut the face of the drill and that radius is set by sliding this forwards or backwards by a very small amount. So when this is up against this piece of wood here, for me that's where I cut my 14 millimeter diameter drills. If this edge is lined up with here, this middle mark, that's 20, uh, millimeter drills and then just here for 26 so you can see there's only you know a very small amount of difference in the uh, distance of this plate let's say between there and there between a 14 and a 26 millimeter drill but it makes a world of difference now I tried to work this out um, by mathematics and got absolutely nowhere I tried to work it out by scale drawing got absolutely nowhere with it. I clearly don't understand the detail of this. So I did it by trial and error by setting up known good drills, turning the, uh, turning the grinding arm here, this piece of angle iron, um, and setting this distance so that the face of a known good drill tracked along the face of the wheel correctly and then I just marked it off. So um, it's a bit of rocket science, I don't understand in detail. I understand it in concept, I don't understand it in, in specific numerical detail, but, but that's what I did. So, you know, that's, that's basically it. Finally, just to say perhaps that this locating peg at the front here can be moved forwards and backwards in and out to suit the drill that you're grinding. 
I hope it was useful to you. Thanks for watching Hacks We Shed.